And hello once more, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to episode uh, 78 of A Druid's Dozen. Yeah, my name's John, known in certain circles as The Rock Druid. Um, do a couple of radio shows. There's the uh, uh, Sunday Rock Show on BCFM Radio, 93.2 FM in Bristol. And the uh, the Rock Druid Show on Astro Radio Earth. The um, links to both shows are going to be in the descriptions. It's going to be down there and uh, over there. I think it's over there. Might be there. Might be that way. One of the two. But anyway, descriptions are in the uh, links down there or one of them, depending on the, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook. And, um, yeah, this is just me raiding my record collection and dragging out some uh, items to wave at you. Um, I had a request for more seven-inch singles, basically. So, uh, um that's what we do. One of the Facebook viewers said, uh, really enjoy the 7 inch singles. Can, I have some, can we have some more? So today is kind of like another load of 80s rock singles. Well, there are two that aren't technically 80s, but you know what I mean. Okay, so we'll kick off with this. The first one that's technically not 80s, because this came out in 1979, November 1979. So uh, as near as damn it 80s. Anyway, yeah, this is the Give em Hell 7-inch by the legendary Witch Fiend. There's the front. There's the back. And uh, there's the disc. Rondet record. Is it Rondet? Yeah. Rondet records. There we go. Mm, just a cat number on the run out groove. Now, Witch Fiend, um, bound out of the East Midlands, if I remember rightly, Nottingham area. Correct me in the comments if, I was right, if I'm wrong, but I think that's where they came from. Um, one of the kind of seminal new over British heavy metal bands. Um, you know, all that kind of uh, doing metal with a punk ethos, you know, indie labels, kind of uh, rough and ready production. And, um, yeah, okay, so one of what, it's the sort of music I grew up listening to, you know. Um, which Fiend, this was their debut single. Their, the album, which this is the title track of, came out, I think it was a year or so later. Um, Cracking little record. Um, B sides a track called Getting Heavy, which is, uh, I've got to admit, it's the, I prefer, the song that I prefer out the two. Um, four piece band, you've got a guy called Montello on guitar, Steve Bridges on vocals, Andy Colton on bass, uh, Gar Scoresby on drums. Um, it's a bit post Sabbath, sort of heavy riff driven uh, stuff. Not a perfect track by any means, but still very, very enjoyable. As is like as is the B side, which in my opinion is the better cut. But um, yeah, that's the first one. Which fiend? Give them hell. Double A uh, sort of with, beat with getting heavy on the B side. 1979 Rondelet Records. Which fiend? Cool. Okay, next up. Quite a rare one. This one. I'll whip this out of its various packages in a minute to show you more clearly. But this is Wasp. Uh, I don't need no doctor. Live. Um, seven inch with a truck with a widow maker on the B side. Anyway, there's the front. I'll whip this out. Blood splattered pack. This used to be liquid in here. It's like a little bag and it used to have like fake blood in it. Long since dried up when considering this was released in uh, oh god, 1980 something. I'll check, but uh, but it's hardly surprising anyway. There's a better look at the uh, disc package. There's the front, there's the back. If I pull this out, not only is it red vinyl, I don't know whether I'll be able to get this on camera, but if you hold it up to the light. It's actually got a blood splatter effect actually etched into the vinyl. 
Um, yeah, kind of red blood on red vinyl. It's kind of not quite hard to see, but it's there. Uh, nothing on the nice, nothing on the run out groove. And when was this? 1987. So it's hardly surprising you've dried up. What's that? 35 years ago. Whoops. Weren't expecting it to um, survive that long. And I'll keep this out of the sleeve for a minute because you can't really see it when it's in there. But yeah, um, Wasp, Live in the Raw, their live album. Um, I can't remember exactly what it was recorded, but uh, um, came out in 1987. Um, sort of summed up that period of Wasp that was kind of from the first album through to uh, Electric Circus, just before the uh, rather excellent Last Command, came, uh, not Last Command, uh, Headless Children came out. And... Um, Pretty damn sweet. Um, it's a live recording, so it's not the best track. And in my opinion, it's not the best track off live in the raw, Leaver's Widowmaker. Um, yeah, if the 12 inch of this hasn't got the uh, flash vinyl or the blood pack, but does contain a cracking cover of Jethro Tull's uh, uh, locomotive breath, which is superb. Got that over in the rack somewhere. Um, yeah. Um, Wasp fun now this is doubly collectible like i said it's uh red vinyl blood splattered red vinyl with the blood pack um i've seen these change hands up was a 50 quid on ebay and various collector's sites so uh you know if you've got a, if you've got one of these especially if your blood's still liquid uh well on the record of course in the blood pack then um you have some serious money but you know i won't say this is worth that much the sleeves a little bit dog eared so it's dried up but it still plays well so uh yeah wasp i don't need no doctor live 1987 very limited edition single only about 500 leads were done apparently anyway yeah okay next up well that's the new over british heavy metal again from uh, 1985 the end of the new over british heavy metal period and here we go. Oh, 1986, sorry, this is. Um, so not technically. Well, is it or isn't it? I don't know. Anyway, there's the front. There is the back. You can see it's fully autographed. There. Let me just get it in the light. Yeah, so it is autographed. You can see the signature across there. Whip this out. Aries Records. It is, of course, Juma. Um, by Tradiga with a cut called the Jester on the B side. Now, Tradiga, um, interesting band, and one that I used to go, used to actually see a lot uh, back in the late 80s, mid to late 80s. It's basically Ray Phillips, the original budgie drummer, with um, Tony Balls, the original budgie guitarist. Along with, uh, I think it's Russ North and Andy someone, I can't remember the other one. But basically three guys that had cloven hoof connections. Cloven hoof, of course, another great, you know, British heavy metal outfit. Um, did this band called Budgie. Yeah, Tom Prince, Andy Ward. And there was someone else as well. But anyway, a five-piece band. I think there might have only been a four-piece when this was recorded. But um, great band. They had that kind of, budgie element and i'm a massive budgie fan um this was their debut single um actual gold leafed etched it's sort of embossed there uh, the album's the same the original pressings um again quite a collectible one you know these strange hands are about 25 quid on collector sites but again not for sale because um like I said, they used to sort of like go see Tradiga a lot to the point where um, when they came in Bristol, when they, when they used to come to Bristol, um, they used to park their tour bus at the end of our road and we'll go on, and me and my mate Paddy would go and have a have, 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 have a coffee with them after the gig on the tour bus or beer or something, yeah. But anyway, um, lovely, brilliant band. Shame they never really got the success they, des they deserved. But they left behind a great album and this great single. So, uh, yeah, B-side, The Jester. Um, 
bit of a kind of more budgie yes, than the Juma's an out and out head banger. Um, Juma's a Russian parliament, if you didn't know. So, uh, yeah, Juliga, Juma, so, uh, 7 inch, 1986. Cool. Oh, be still my beating heart. It's Susie Quattro. Yeah. Um, the lady I've always had a thing about. Um, well, put it this way. I'm 10 years old. I'm watching Top of the Pops. And uh, on comes Susie in a leather cat suit playing, uh, playing Can the Can. And um, it stirred kind of feelings in my young body my young body and mind that i wasn't quite sure about at the time but they felt nice if you know what i mean yeah and um you know came uh, with susie quite tries the case I, I originally came for the other cat suit i stayed for the music because the, cause she is a seminal rock and roller um this is the rock hard at seven inch from uh, uh 1980 um Lifted from the album Rock Hard, but also features on the soundtrack of a movie called uh, Times Square. Never seen Times Square, but I have the Rock Hard album. It's on one of the early editions of these dozens. Cracking record. Um, Rock Hard, a real one of Susie's heaviest singles is a real headbanger. Um, but quite rock and roll, because all that stuff's sort of like quite rock and roll. But um, definitely got uh, got high headbang ability factor. Um, produced by Mickey, uh, by Chin and Chapman. Uh, B-side track called State of Mind, also from the album, written by Susie Quattro herself. Um, yeah, great, great song from the uh, bass-playing rock goddess that she is. And of course, Susie's still going strong. Went into her 70s, still rocking and rolling like a good one. Yeah, you can't keep a good girl down, can you? Yeah, Susie Quattro, rock hard. If you're not really sort of explored much Susie Quattro um, yeah some of her stuff can be a bit pants but you know a lot of it can be very very sweet indeed Susie Quattro 1980 rock hard okay we'll have a bit of this next Queensryche take hold of the flame besides a cut called Night Rider um which is an album track. A-side comes from the album uh, The Warning, which I believe was Queen Drake's debut album. Yeah, I know there was a um, uh, a couple of EPs before then, but their first full-length album. It came out in uh, 1983. There's the front. There's the back. Now this is long before Queen Drake had their big concept. Well, oh, there's the disc. There's the album. There's the disc, by the way. Yeah, my records. Now this is long before Queen Drake had, you know, things like the Operation Mind Crime album and the uh, what was it? Um, oh, I can't think of the name of the single they had. Big hit. But anyway, long before then. Um, this is primordial Queen's right. Still got Jeff Tate in fine form with a cracking voice that he is. Um, still uh, still uh, Chris DeMargo laying down some fantastic guitar work. And um, this album's really good. Uh, well, the whole album, the, the, uh, sorry, the uh, warning album is pretty good and this single's pretty sweet as well. More of a kind of Iron Maiden you like, Queen's right. Um, band exploring what they were doing. Um, very maiden influenced off this on this album on this single and uh very sweet take hold of the flames a bit of an anthem um big air punchy job night rider again bit of an head banger but uh, i said it's not an album track so uh i can't really remember how it went so i didn't get a chance to play these through beforehand so uh yeah but yeah queen's right again a band that kind of yeah you know, that's a they kind of went off the rails a bit um, uh, over recent years. Although, um, since Jeff Tate departed, um, Queensryche has gone on to do some pretty good stuff, and Jeff Tate's gone and done some pretty good solo stuff. So, uh, out of the split comes uh, comes two good good, pro good, uh, good outfits. But anyway, um, still love the early stuff. Um, 
and uh, yeah, take hold of the flame is still one of my favourite Queen's Right tracks. So yeah, Queen's Right, take hold of the flame, 1983. Okay, next up, interesting one from Trevor Rabin. Again, yeah, uh, there's the front. There's the back of the album, The Wolf. Um, again, an album I looked at on a previous episode of this, these dozens. And uh, clear vinyl. See-through. Woo! Yeah, see-through. Um Take me to a party with looking for a lady. Maybe he was looking for a lady at the party. I don't know. Now, uh, Trevor Rabin, um, South African born guitarist, um, uh, had a few solo albums out. Um, I don't, I can't remember what he was doing before before the solo albums. Had a string of solo albums out, including um, Wolf. There was an eponymous album, a couple of others as well. But I've got some of them on vinyl, some of them digitally. But then um, in 1983, he uh, joined Yes as a replacement for Steve Howe. And um, did, did, did several albums with Yes, uh, most notably 90125 and Big Generator. <coughs> um, and he's a, he's a great guitarist when he was with Yes. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm not the world's biggest Yes fan, although... You know, I do possess a lot of their back catalogue. But, you know, what I'm trying to say is don't, because he's most most known as the guitarist from Yes, don't look at these, um, anything he does solo and think it's going to be very prog rock. This isn't. This is as uh, Take Me To A Party and Looking For A Lady. They're both rock and roll numbers. Um, Take Me To A Party is a particularly up-tempo, uh, moon-stomping, head-bang river track. Um, looking for a lady, uh, Wolfman, a similar kind of vein. Maybe a bit more kind of atmospheric, but still a corking song. Um, both tracks do the album Wolf of uh, Justice. And like I said, um, if you don't want to get hold of the 7-inch of this, go get the Wolf album. Both tracks are on there, and um, they're pretty damn good. Great album. Um, you know, and it gives me kind of... Uh, bit of admiration for Trevor Rabin that he went from the rock and roll start doing the extreme prog rock um, at a drop of a hat. So, yeah. Trevor Rabin, the fantastic Take Me To A Party, 1981 this came out. Okay, next up. Band you don't hear much of these days. Not in their original format anyway. This is Terraplane. Um, if that's what it takes, and this came out in... He says, try and have a look. I'll have a look on the sleeve in the middle. Anyway, there, at the disc in the middle, there's the front. There's the back. Whip this out. Epic Records, 1980, 1986, this was. Now, Terraplane, band out of Yorkshire, and they were kind of came through. I wouldn't really call them new over British heavy metal, but they were part of that scene. Um, um, you know, on the fringes thereof. They weren't very metal at all. Um, not even as heavy as bands like Grand Prix. Um, very, very kind of in the kind of soft rock, almost in the kind of journey, um, foreigner kind of vein. And um, did a couple of albums. Uh, this is a track, it's tracked originally from their second album, Moving Target. Um, is it White and Blue, I think, was their first one. Yeah, I don't know, I can't remember. I haven't got the turn playing now, so I just got a section of singles by. Them. And um, yeah. And they're okay. Never a band that really set me on fire. Um, did a really good power ballad called Talking to Myself. But that's about it. If that's what it takes, another kind of semi-ballad, Living After Dark, non-album track. Bit of a forgetful soft rocker. But, 
you know, whilst I wouldn't recommend Sarah playing as a band in their own right, after the not long after this album and this single came out, they did kind of have a, a split and reformation, came back as Thunder, um, turned the heaviness dial up, added a bit of sleaze, and uh, they're still going strong to this day. Um, you know, tracks like Sex in Cars and that kind of thing. But anyway, um, yeah, interesting thing to point out that, you know, um, where uh, it Danny Bowes and uh, Luke Morley from Thunder came from. I don't know what ever happened to uh, keyboardist Nick Landon or uh, uh, drummer Gary James or Rudy Riveri on the other guitarist. The answers in the questions downstairs. How many of them did go on to Thunder? I know Bowes and Morley did. I'm not sure about the rest. But anyway, early days of Thunder when they were called Terraplane, if that's what it takes. Cool. Okay, next up, a new, bit more new over British heavy metal. There we go. Tigers of Pantang, Silver and Gold, and uh, All or Nothing. So the story so far with Silver and Gold, All or Nothing on the B-side, three track, seven inch. There's the front. There's the back. All tracks taken from the Spellbound album. And I think this is 1981, I'm not sure. 1981, yeah. There's the... Uh, there we go. Yeah, Tigers of Pantago, of course, uh, out of the northeast. Um, Geordie, well, probably one of Newcastle's, uh, I think Newcastle, like Sunderland or Gateshead or something like that. I can't remember. From Geordie land, northeast anyway. <clears throat> Apologies to any Mackhams watching if I've accidentally called them Geordies. But anyway, um, they're um, one of the seven old bands on New Haven British Heavy Metal era. Um, whole string of great albums you know like so this is off spellbound then you had crazy nights the cage um wildcat in wreckage etc all corking stuff um of course you have uh where is he john sykes at the end there went on to find fame with white snake and thin lizzie um and uh times of pan saying with many different variations are going uh, changes are still an ongoing concern. Just last year, my band Odin Stashton should have supported Tigers of Pantang on their most recent tour or dates thereof, but um, owing to kind of uh, problems with various venues and that, that never took place. Hoping to maybe we can get it get, get it together again at some point. But um, yeah, absolute brilliant band. Seen them live a few times over the years. Always deliver both record and uh live the story so far um cracking little track not the best thing on spellbound in my opinion but getting up there silver and gold is one of the better tracks off spellbound um all or nothing i think it's a non-album track i may be wrong yeah, it's a live version, all or nothing on here, because I think it's originally on the uh, Wildcat in the album. But anyway, um, just a great little uh, seven inch. You can't really go wrong with the Tigers of Pantang. And uh, yeah, this one's pretty sweet. Yeah, Tigers of Pantang, um, the story so far, 1981. Okay, next up, another kind of sort of new over British heavy metal band. Verity. There's the front. There's the back. Bit dog eared this thing, so I've had this one a long, long time. And I'll whip this out. There we go. PRT Records, Precision Records and Tapes. Yeah, 
Yeah. Now, Verity was a band put together by John Verity. And John Verity was a guitarist who was probably best known for working with Argent in the uh, mid to late 70s. Um, when Argent eventually fell apart, 75, 76, around about then, um, he went solo, but then put his own band together. Did one, out, or did one album called Interrupted Journey, which is okay, it's not brilliant, but um, and uh, as far as I'm aware, this one single. Um, the A side Stay With Me Baby, B side's Falling. Uh, B side's okay, Stay With Me Baby is a bit of a kind of um, uh, got, yeah, sort of slow uh, rocker kind of thing. Um, it's pretty good. It's not gonna be, it's not earth shattering. Verity, I find, aren't exactly earth shattering as a band, but they're sweet, and I'm a big Argent fan, so I ke I keep the stuff in the collection because of the Argent connection. So, uh, yeah, not much else to say about this because I don't know that much else about whatever happened to John Verity and the rest of Verity or who was in Verity. I don't know, but anyway, um. I've got the album around somewhere. Maybe I'll drag that out in a couple of weeks and we'll have a look at that. But anyway, yeah, Verity, Stay With Me Baby, 1983. Um, yeah, good stuff. Okay, next up, now this is a classic single. This is Tank and uh, their version of the Osmonds number, Crazy Horses. With a again a non-album track called uh, "Filth Bitch Boogie" on the B side. There's the front. Whip this out. There's the disc. There's the back of the sleeve there. Now Tank, um, band put together by a guy called Algie Ward, former Damned bass player, and um, <coughs> I've got for a punk mate of mine. So, once said, you know, why is it that former damn bass players normally end up in metal bands? Because, you know, Paul Gray ends up in UFO. But anyway, um, the uh, uh, absolute storming band, band known as uh, Motorhead's Little Bastard Brother, because the Motorhead influence is very strong in, the, in, in Tank. Absolutely, you know, they do sound like a budget Motorhead. And I don't mean that um, in any de derogatory way, because... Love Motorhead, absolutely bloody love Tank as well. Um, the uh, Crazy Horses, an absolutely barnstorming version of the Osmonds uh, song, almost played note for note, not taking the piss, just kind of uh, playing. And Osmonds Crazy Horses is not a bad track as a kind of head-banging rocker goes. All Tank do it is play it and turn the evidence dial up to 11. Um, absolutely storming uh, version. Filth Bitch Boogie, um, uh, yeah, sort of heavy, heavy rock and roll number, um, showing kind of tanks, kind of lighter side if they ever had one, but um, yeah, overall, absolutely brilliant. Um, if you never hear any other tank, uh, record, try and get try and listen to this track, uh, Crazy Horses, it's brilliant. Fantastic cover. Okay, next up. We have this. UFO when it's time to rock for 198 again 1983 this one. With the still got the original sew on jacket patch. And this here is still sealed, never been opened. This was from the time when I first started, rather than just collecting records to um, just yeah, have the music, when I first actually thought, hang on a minute, these might be um, of interest. So uh, I actually brought two copies of this. I have the other copy over there. The um, patch off that one, one of my old denim cut off, and uh, 
long since vanished into the ether. And I kept this one intact. So I can't tell you, uh, show you the label, but I can tell you it's a Christmas blue embossed label. And uh, yeah, when it's time to rock uh, um, off uh, UFO's album Making Contact, not the best UFO album, but when it's time to rock is a great track. Um, big kind of air punchy anthem. B size on an album track called Everybody Knows, a bit of a rock and roller. And uh, yeah, although the kind of 80s wasn't UFO at their best, especially the early 80s, um, it's still pretty sweet. Um, this is Paul Raymond, Phil Chapman. Phil Raymond, Paul Chapman. One of the two Phil Moore, can't remember the drummer. But um, yeah, sweet track with its original patch. 1983 value of which i don't know i have seen them go for about 20 quid with the patch you know so it's not hideously valuable but interesting all the same leads us on to the last one for today and um <coughs> the second one that isn't technically 80s this is heaven by tiger tales um very early 1990 this came out there's the front there's the back whip this out music for nations label uh, uh, music for nations were a great label back in the day a lot of stuff by, uh, uh, that came out on that label uh, no, seven inches rarely have anything other than the catalog number on the run out groove and this is no exception now in case you don't know tigers of pantang welsh kind of glammy sleeve rockers um not exactly new over british heavy metal well, they came out on the tail end of that um weren't really active until about 86 but heavily inspired by some of the glammy and new over british heavy metals like rothschild Rank Elson, Gerd, etc. Um, and they weren't really part of that sleeve rock of the year either because, you know, um, they're, you know, bands like, um, what was it, uh, Choir Boys and uh, the Babysitters and uh, Dogs the Moor had a kind of certain kind of sound to them. Tigers of, uh, Tiger Sales never really had that. They were just kind of out and out, woo yay, um, you know, like, not a lot of the American bands, Rat, Poison, etc., but on steroids. They were actually really quite heavy. Saw them live a few times, got a few of their releases, including this one. Um, Heaven, um, one of the slightly softer tracks off the Berserk album, Berserk being their seminal, seminal record from 1990. Um, the... Uh, and then uh, the B side of this is a quite a corking cover of Megadeth's Peace Cells. Absolutely storming version. Um, yeah. Um, Tiger Tales kind of didn't exactly set the world on fire. I wouldn't exactly say they're a band I'm crazy about. Although I respect them for what they do. And um, I do, I, I like this single primarily for the Peace Cells cover on the B side. Can't remember if that was actually made the album or not, or if it's on the as a bonus cut on the CD reissue. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, um, vocals by Kim Hook, Kim Hooker, guitarist Jay Pepper, Pepsi Tate on bass, and uh, Alex Mincham on drums. Fincham on drums. Um, just a sweet record. Well, the B side is A side's a bit, yeah, but the B side's absolutely storming. So that's it for today. Um, Tigers of uh, Tigers of Pan Tigers of Pantang. Boy, do you have them? Tiger Sales Heaven, nineteen nine uh, from nineteen uh, ninety. So that's a quick roundup of some nineteen eighties ish singles. Um, yeah, I'm going to do more singles next week. I'll do some twelve inches, and then I'll come back to some albums after that. Unless, of course, you want to see some of my vast collection of CD promo singles for more recent times. In which case, I'll be happy to oblige. Let me know in the comments down there 
over there or maybe there one of the two but anyway um uh yeah that's it for this week until next week peeps um love you all comments and uh, subscriptions and uh likes are most welcome helps boost the algorithm and gets the word around and uh let's share our love of rock and roll so until next week peeps i'm out of here bye <laughs>